Hi friends, welcome to testing tools online. I am Kiran. So today we are going to discuss about XPath. XPath in UFT 11.5 plus. Now let's have a look on what is this XPath and how it is useful to identify web publications uniquely. And it's a very very powerful element to identify complex web elements so let's have a clear idea on what's xpath so xpath is nothing but it's a language which is used to get the information from xml file so basically we use some path expressions to create this xpath so as i said earlier we use this xpath more dynamically rather than combining multiple properties to make a particular object unique so earlier we have seen that if at all certain information is not provided by a developer for a particular object we used to make it unique by taking some combination of properties so as if now from now we are going to use this new feature called xpath so that we will see as we go inside the topic so first see first first uh, let me explain you that from qtp 11.5 xpath is supported by your qtp so let's see how xpath is supported and all that kind of story once if we move into the subject so now let's move on to the example and let's see how does this xpath works so for that we are going to record a simple task and we'll try to identify how qtp is using xpath to identify the objects okay so now what we do is let us go to some object identification so in this web let's try to configure some web edit so mandatory fields are html tag name and type even class as assistive property and HTML ID as one of the assistive property and even smart identification is also enabled. So what I am going to do is just enable sorry disable the smart identification and try to add so I'm removing all the mandatory fields or all, all the mandatory fields I have no mandatory fields as if now and even will remove all the assistive properties also even my sm smart identification has been disabled and click on ok so I have done this for web edit click ok and just go to file click on settings Click on run. So, anyways, smart identification has been disabled here during the running session. Everything is fine. Now, let's have a small task. Click on record. Just try to write something in this email field. I'm writing my name called Kiran. and try to stop the test just I have performed only one activity right now so just open your object repository see we have no description properties sorry I'm very sorry So we have no description properties right even smart identification has been disabled so i am doing one thing even i am making ordinal identifier set to null none so when i run the test according to my knowledge qtp should throw an error message yes because like 
it doesn't have any properties there are no chance of identifying a object yes but let's try to run the test let's see qdp works beyond our expectation let's check it so let me run the test See, so QDP has successfully written Kiran in that email edit box. So, how does this happen? The reason behind that is XPath. So, even objects are not sufficient. In that case, QDP internally get the information of XPath and it will use that XPath while executing it. So, all this process happens internally. Unfortunately, we can't view that X path, but I will prove you that I will prove you that this identification has been happened only using X path. So let's see that. Go to tools, options, GI testing, web, click on advanced. At last scroll down to the last see a learn and run using automatic xpath identifiers just uncheck this click ok now run the test same test run again now definitely it will throw an error message because your xpath has been disabled now The email object's description matches more than one of the object currently displaying in your application. This is what we have expected earlier. But then, it has worked beyond our expectation. Why? Because it has identified using your XPath. Now, I have disabled the XPath and it's working according to our expectation. So, in the sense, literally, internally, QTP uses XPath also one of the powerful identification as a one of the powerful identification mechanism. Clear? So now, now what we do is I have disabled XPath which is internally created by QTP. So I have no XPath as if now. So from QTP 11.5 QTP has provided with some enhancements like even even we can create our own XPath and we can use that XPath in our test. So for that we have two process. The first one is using some descriptive programming. So let's see how to use XPath using descriptive programming. Descriptive programming. So now so we have discussed it regarding descriptive programming in our previous sessions. So just uh, try to find, try to look at the screen. So here I have created the XPath of that email edit box. So anyways, we are going to discuss how to create the XPath in the coming chapter. But as if now, this is the XPath of your, which is highlighted here, which is in bold. So it's a XPath of the email edit box. So I have used some attributes. To create the export of this email edit box so as if now just try to understand that this is xpath which is created by me okay so we'll use this xpath and let's see how does qtp behaves so i'm trying to delete all my object repository so I am trying to write some descriptive programming right away.
I have no object repository as if now. So let's take some properties of that browser. We'll take name property as Gmail. Even page title also we can take it as a Gmail or name. There is no name property title is Gmail for the page. Oh, let's check. Do you have any title? Title is Gmail. So, and for the edit box, we'll take XPath as property. Title is equal to Gmail and event page also. Title is equal to Gmail and here I'm going to take X path. So as I said earlier, I have created one X path. So let me copy this X path. So how given X path as a property and value of the X path what I have created. So let's run this. You can see there is nothing in that uh, email edit box. Look at the screen. It has successfully performed operation on that edit box. And from QTP or else UFT12 onwards, even using object repository also we can use xpath it is so simple go to your object repository so have no test objects as if now we'll add some test objects or else directly we'll add test objects of this edit box So for this it is edit box we have no description properties as if now because we have disabled everything in the identification process so just click on this add description button here so you can find xpath in the list select that xpath click ok and enter the value of the xpath here starting from the slashes to the end of bracket. So this is what my path of that object. Well, let's try to move on to normal board object repository mode. So I have added the information of that particular edit box in the object repository and even I have given xpath over there. So let's try to run the test once again. So try to understand the concept. So in the object repository directly I have added xpath for this object. See xpath and this is what my object's value is.
see it has successfully written kiran over there so this new feature has been implemented from qtp 12 or else from uft 12 onwards now i guess everyone is aware of what's xpath and how should it be used now let's move into further and let's use this xpath in some examples okay so before to that let's try to understand how this xpath is to be created so that we will see it in the coming session